And sorry for the delay um, in starting on tonight. We had some system difficulties, and so um, they had to reboot the system and all that kind of stuff. And so um, we're a little late getting started. So my apologies, but it's good to see y'all. It's good to see y'all in the house. Those who are watching online, it's good to see you. Blessings and peace, and uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You know, a lot of y'all, I ain't seen you since last year. <laughs> so it's good to see you this year in, uh, in 2024. So praise the Lord for each and every one of you. We want to get into this thing tonight. Um, I don't anticipate us being here uh, long, but, you know, I say that all the time. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it just, it just so happens to be what it is. You know what I mean? I was cracking up. Um, I'm going to put it on the spot, but I was cracking up um, uh, uh, with Dr. Graves on Sunday. Uh, she said, I just got a little message. It ain't going to be, it's going to be a few minutes. I said, <laughs> <laughs> Next thing you know, she like, ah, ah, ah. folk around the altar. Ah. I said, I knew it wasn't going to be no <laughs> few minutes. minutes. <laughs> I, said, look at, I said, look at this. So we submit to God and we, we do what, what God says do. But, you know, we'll see where it goes tonight. All right. So uh, God bless your hearts. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for all of your goodness. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. And we thank you for, for just being God and God all by yourself. Lord, we come now uh, seeking you, seeking direction and understanding from you, uh, seeking guidance from you, seeking power from you, seeking anointing from you. God, it is our prayer that you make us over, that you allow us to be what you want us to be so that we can go where you want us to go. Lord, we thank you in advance. Bless us tonight. And those who are not here, Lord, we pray for them wherever they may be. And those who are here, Lord, bless us as we gather together in the sanctuary. In the name of our Christ, let every heart say amen. 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 So what I want to do first is just kind of a little review. And what I mean by review, I want to review just kind of briefly uh, watch night. Okay. Watch night was intentional, right? It was intentional. It was, that's why I was nervous. That's why it was hard to get out because it was, it was, okay, Lord, this is, this is setting the stage and, and folk don't like the stage to be set. Hello, somebody. Folk, folk like, you know, folk like business as usual, but we can't do business as usual. Nothing can be business as usual. Um, when they were talking about the apostles in the scriptures, uh, in the book of Acts, uh, it was so interesting how they described them. They said, these are the ones that are coming up in here, turning the world upside down. That's in the Bible. I'm not making that up. These are the folks that are coming in here, turning the world upside down. That's what the, the, that's what the gospel is. That's what, that's what our connection to God is. It is seeking to turn our lives, turn ministry, turn this world upside down in a positive way, not in a destructive way, but in a powerful, anointed way. So when we talk about from foundation up, okay, uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Um, these things just don't happen. You know how um, sometimes, you know, you look at a, a meal in front of you and you think it was just, it was just, it came out like that. No, it didn't come out like that. It came from somebody in the kitchen doing seasoning and working and grounding and doing flipping and all that stuff. So what you see is the end result, but you don't know about the previous piece. So for those of us who are, have been behind the scenes, I've been talking about from foundation up probably since about September. Praying and, and formulating how we are to move forward from foundation up. So the premise of, of Watch Night and the premise of what, what I want you to understand on today is that uh, we have been blessed for 100 years, for 100 years, and that, that's something we ought to be able to celebrate. God has brought us from a small uh, church in Burlington out of Second Baptist in Mount Holly to develop into 
a place 100 years later that is still moving, still touching lives, and still following uh, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's a beautiful thing. That is a strong foundation. But what happens is in our individual lives and in our collective church lives, we can mess up and focus on our foundation too much. Right. And when we focus on our foundation too much, we end up going in the wrong direction. Foundation is never meant to be the goal. Foundation is meant to be the launching pad. Am I making sense? Foundation is meant to be the launching pad. When you get the foundation, that is uh, uh, that is the point. Uh, that is that is the substance of what you need that propels you upward, propels you forward. We use the example of the Wilshire uh, Grand Tower in Los Angeles, right? I did all the numbers. Uh, you know how how they had to a geologist had to go uh, deep down many stories to make sure the foundation was good, longest, biggest concrete pour, something over 80 million uh, tons of, of, of concrete to build this building, right? But the purpose of the foundation was to build the building. Why pour the foundation if you ain't going to build the building? The purpose of the foundation is for the building. So to not build the building after you have the foundation is a waste. Think if they, if they decide not to build that building. They just waited, wasted over 80 million tons of concrete. Are y'all feeling me tonight? You watching, you watching where we're going? So with Christ and with the history of this church, we have a foundation and it is our obligation to build on the foundation that God has given us. Now, be very clear. Be very clear. When you are seeking to build on the foundation, it's always a fight. Y'all want me to prove it? It's always a fight. Always, always a fight. Right? I'm going to throw some history at you. Anybody heard the name J.H. Jackson? Anybody heard that name? J.H. Jackson. It's unfortunate we haven't heard that name much. J.H. Jackson was the president of the National Baptist Convention for years upon years upon years. Uh, one of the most influential preachers of the 20th century. Why don't you know his name? The reason you don't know his name is because uh, uh, there was a group of people who were frustrated with his leadership that broke off and started what was known, is still known as the Progressive Baptist Convention. And this was the group that was uh, Dr. King and Gardner Taylor and these progressive pastors who said the church need to be talking about the civil rights, the injustices that are going on. Why don't you know J.H. Jackson anymore? Because at that time, God bless him, he did wonderful things, but at that time, he was foundation-centered. And there were other guys who said, we got to. Am I making sense? I'm talking with you today, you getting it? So that's what we want to do. We have the foundation. Timothy, you got the foundation. Your grandmother and your mother, they've given you the foundation. So because you have the foundation, you don't stay there, what do you do? Y'all remember the text? What do you do? Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. What's the other word for stirring it up? Fanning the flames, right? If you don't fan the flames, what happens? Got to fan flames. And so it's time for us to not just kind of let the wind fan it for us and say thank you. It's time for us to start intentionally fanning these flames. 
Because God has not given us spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind. Y'all with me tonight? Mm -hmm. Okay. And sometimes our biggest blessings come when we move forward, even though we are fearful, just with the understanding that that fear that we have didn't come from God. Because God doesn't give fear. All right? We move forward saying, whatever fear I have, I have to overcome it. One of the most powerful phrases, and, I, and you all know this phrase, it's nothing new. Um, it's that Harriet Tubman phrase. I think about it all the time when she says, I could have freed so many more slaves if they only knew they were slaves. Isn't that powerful? We can go so much further if we just recognize where we are and, and we, we look over there and say, okay, that's something that we can do. That's a place that we can go. Any comments, questions so far? Sir, hold on one second. Let's get the mic to you. Was the brother that was what? Well, he wasn't progressive. He was foundational. Um, because of what he stood for, was he done away with because of that fact? Because others no, 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 came no, along? No, 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 no. You, if you read the history of him, he's a very powerful man. He's legendary. I use him as an example of um, he was of a certain guard and was not concerned with, with matters that needed to take us up. Okay. Um, and so in that regard, there was a group led by Dr. King and, and Gardner Taylor that said, no, we have to be concerned about the injustices in this world. We have to be concerned about our people. We must be progressive, i.e. progressive National Baptist Convention. Okay. But a powerful, powerful preacher. He was, he, he was um, the, the old stories were, uh, he stayed in the position a very, very long time. And so many times they wanted to vote him out. And the old story goes is that um, they always wanted to vote him out, but you can't let him get the mic. If you let him get the mic and you let him preach, it's going to be all over. So they said they would come to the convention ready to vote him out. And then he'd get the mic and he'd start preaching. And he was so powerful that they said grown men would come crying back to the altar. Four more years. <laughs> Four more years. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Because he was preaching the gospel, he was right? preaching. He was a preacher. He was okay. a preacher. Yes, he was. Uh, right. Yeah, so just want to, y'all look him up, J.H. Jackson, very powerful uh, man. But, and, and it's unfortunate that we don't know his name. He was just on the wrong side of that issue. Make sense? Okay, so uh, from foundation up, we're moving up, we're moving forward. Uh, we're going where God wants us to be collectively and individually. That starts off next week. So y'all watching, I expect you here. I want you here, right? Those who are watching, I want you here next week, next Wednesday. Those who are here, I would like you back next week. Um, just like last year, remember we started our fast with Pastor Sharp. It was a very powerful experience because the people came ready with a sense of readiness that we're going into this thing. And, 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 and I believe the same thing can happen next week. If we come with a readiness and expectation um, uh, collectively together ready to move from foundation up okay so that's what this is and so um we start off preparing ourselves to fast fasting um if you want a definition i can give you a definition it's simple it is the deliberate the deliberate temporary abstention from food for religious reasons it is the deliberate, temporary abstention from food for religious reasons. Now, a lot of people like to say, oh, I'm fasting from social media. I'm fasting from TV. I'm fasting from, you know, going out to the movies. You ain't fasting. You're withholding your, from something. You're, you're, you're subtracting something, but you're not fasting. Fasting's food. Okay? 
Now, some people would disagree with that, but there is nothing biblically, there is no, there is no biblical evidence of fasting being anything other than food. You show me where it is, and I'll, I will retract my statement. But from what I've read, nowhere. Okay? It is, it is food. It is dealing with food. Now, a broader piece is what is called asceticism. Anyone heard of that word? Asceticism. Okay? One who is an ascetic. One who, who lives a life of asceticism, meaning that they withhold in general. They believe that their religious duties is to withhold or withdraw from the various pleasures of life. So that goes, an ascetic lifestyle is one that goes beyond food. Um, a, 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 a primary example of an ascetic lifestyle is, um, is a nun or a priest, right? A nun who refuses to marry because she is married. That nun is married to Jesus. Am I making sense? That priest refuses um, sexual relations with anyone because they live an ascetic lifestyle. They're giving themselves to God. That's a broader sense of asceticism, which is a religious piece, which we'll come back to again in Colossians. I don't know if you remember, we were kind of talking about that. They were taking asceticism to the extreme. Right? And Paul says, y'all going a little crazy with all that. <laughs> Am I making sense? Okay. But we're talking about fasting. Fasting. And, and that is what we want to do beginning on next Thursday. Okay? So, so, so Wednesday is worship. And then at midnight, Thursday, we start. Any questions? Okay. 21 days. Sir. Ho hold on one second. Let's get you the mic. Now, I saw on your website um, about the fasting, the do's and the don'ts. That's, leg that's all legit. The, the stuff we eat. Like you said, um, pretty much no refined flour in terms of fasting. Mm -hmm. Like no, um, no, no you know, uh, junk food or whatever. But you could eat about Ezekiel bread, is that considered, mm -hmm. that, yeah. that's, that's legit, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure, clarify that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and so we'll talk a little bit about that today. Okay. Um, because it's, it's not, we call it the Daniel fast. It's not all the way, Daniel. Like, we, people call it that, but it, it ain't quite all the way there. I looked it up too. I looked up the scripture of yeah, it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you really want to go all the way. Kind of deep there. Yeah. Yeah. Most of, most of y'all be crying by by, <laughs> by four, <laughs> three three four days later. If we did it <laughs> really by the scripture, right? You know what I'm saying? This kind of helps you live a little bit. You know what I'm saying? A question? Yes, ma'am. Well, let me get the mic to you. When you're telling us to fast, are we fasting the whole day and not eating for the 21 days? 21 days, every day, all day. No eating at all? No, 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 we eat. Okay, we eat. It's so, a Daniel fast. I'll explain that in a little bit. Okay, that's what I needed to know. Uh -huh, absolutely, absolutely. Anybody else? Okay, so what I want to do um, for these next few minutes is I want to kind of take you from Old Testament to New Testament to give you kind of a broader understanding. Now, this, this discussion, I'm really kind of condensing this. I mean, you could really, like, talk about fasting for a minute, but I think for the purposes of what we're doing, we don't need to go through all of, all of that. Like, we don't need to go into the intertest intertestament studies of, of uh, fasting. Uh, that's pointless. You know, so but we're just gonna do old and new and just a few examples. So one of uh, probably the oldest, actually I believe it is the oldest um, uh, um, mention of fasting in the scriptures is associated what with what was called the Day of Atonement. Anyone familiar with that? 
Day of Atonement. Anyone familiar with that? Anyone know what that is? Mm -hmm. It was a day that came once a year, once a year, where the people's sins were atoned for. Okay, uh, there's a whole process of it. And uh, what, what was really important about uh, the Day of Atonement was the people's participation in it. That was a day where they did not eat. That was a day where they rested. That was a day where um, it was considered self-denial. And I'm going to self-deny on this particular day because this day represents a day of cleansing impurities and my sins being taken away. Their sins were taken away on a scapegoat. That was the, that was the symbolism of it. And the sanctuary was cleansed on that day. So it was that one day, right, that was representative of that. And so that's our earliest example of fasting in the scriptures, all right? And so that's very, very important for, for us to understand. You can find that in uh, Leviticus, and you can find that also in uh, Deuteronomy, okay? You'll see that. But there, there are other examples of how and when fasting was used in the scriptures. I'm going to give you a couple of them, okay? Um, here's, here's one example. So um, battles are going on. Severe battles are going on. David is a part of those battles. But two people that are close to David die in battle. One who is his brother, his, his closest friend, a man by the name of Jonathan. Y'all heard that, that name? Then the other who dies is one who he loves but doesn't love him, King Saul. Right? There's never, read the scriptures. You will see very clearly that David never wanted to harm Saul. It was only Saul that wanted to harm David. In fact, uh, David had the opportunity, cut off a piece of his, of his clothes, and held it in front of him, said, I could have killed you, but, it, but, but you don't seem to understand that I love you and I respect you. Stop coming after me. Ultimately, after Saul has lost so much, it says he fell on his sword. That's a biblical phrase for saying he, he killed himself. He fell on his sword. And the Bible says that David mourned. How did he mourn? One of the ways he mourned was through fasting. Okay? Am I making sense? All right. If you move over to 2 Samuel, another sense of fasting is same character, same person, David. Right? Bathsheba. Y'all remember that? Uh-huh. He do the get down with Bathsheba and shouldn't have been doing the get down with Bathsheba. Right? And depending on what perspective you, you, you read it from determines your theology. Some say Bathsheba was a willing participant in the get down. Some people say it was a power play by David and if, because he was king. And if that's the case, he raped her. Either way, the get down went down. <laughs> the get down does what the get down does. The get down produces a baby. Right? Baby is born sick. What does David do? He fasts. He mourns. He fasts. He recognizes his wrong. And he's saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Just, just don't let this happen. And the baby dies. And what did David do? He stops. He st stops fasting. Stop, stops all the praying. And, and, and he gets himself back together. Sir. Did David fast? 
I uh, believe it was seven days. I'll go back and look, though. Any other questions on that? All right, so those, those are a couple of biblical examples. Let, let's go a little bit further. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy being the fifth book of the Bible. Do you have it? So this is the story of Moses going up to the mountain. Verse number nine. Do you have it? He says these words. When I went up into the mountain to receive the tablets of stone. Y'all know the tablets of stone? Ten commandments. Okay. Okay. The tablets of the covenant which the Lord made with you. Then I stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. And what does it say? I neither ate bread nor drank water. So what did he do? He fasted. Then the Lord delivered to me two tablets of stone written with the finger of God. And on them were all the words which the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain from the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. Okay. Now, again, um, most people, you know, you read that literally. Y'all don't read that literally. Okay. Don't, don't read that. Don't try to go 40 days and 40 nights and not eat nothing. That ain't what it's saying. Right. 40 is a figurative number. 40, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. He went up there, 40 days. It's, they used it that way. That's how they use numbers, 40 days. It just means he did it until it was finished. Okay? Don't go 40 days and 40 nights trying not to eat. I'll be eulogizing you. <laughs> all right? <laughs> just putting that out there, all right? Y'all got it? We making sense? Okay. So, so, so I need God to show up. This is one of the early examples of I'm fasting because I need God to show up. Because I need to experience God. Because I need to see God do something. So it's not crazy when we say I'm fasting because I need God to move. This is a clear example in the text. We see it. We see it. He says very, very clearly, he says, I went to the mountain, he says, and I didn't eat or drink because I went up there for something. I went up there to experience God. And then, T-H-E-N, you see that verse 10? Then the Lord div delivered. So I went up intentional to get from God, and I did so by fasting. But it's a spirit of humility that is associated with it. Because if you go up there just hungry, you're just going to be hungry. Right? We talked about that before. You get baptized, your heart ain't changed. Right? You're a dry devil, and now you're just a wet one. Making sense? Humility, heart in the right place, fasting, God, I need you to move, God moves. Ten commandments come. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? Okay. Let's fast forward, 2024. I need God to move at TBC. And, and I need God to move in my life. There's some things that I need to get right and I need to get in order. And so part of the 21 days of fasting is God move. And I'm coming to you with a spirit of humility because I understand I can't give myself the tablets of stone. It only happens if you give it. 
So I'm coming with a spirit of humility. I am fasting. I'm not eating because I need to receive from you, not just for me, but for the people. Oh, that's heavy. So when we go through this collectively, I need you in your prayer life, in your spirit to say, God, I need you to move in the life of my church. I hope you're hearing me tonight. And not only do I need you to move in the life of my church, I need you to move in my life. I need you to show up in my life. I need you to do some stuff in my life, move some things around in my life. Get the best out of me in, in my life. Am I making sense? Is this, is this, is this hidden? Sometimes it's kind of hard because I got to look around and when it's quiet, you know, it could be, you know, it could be the chicken before you got here or it could be the spirit of the Lord <laughs> touching you. You, know, you never know. You got to like find out which one it is. Am I making sense tonight? So let's move a little bit further. So, so it is that, it is that God, I need you to show up. But then here's, here's a, here's, here is one right here. I want you to go to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. So we're going to look at Daniel chapter 9 toward the end of this. But right now we're going to look at Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10 is after Daniel fasted. Okay? So we're going to look at after, but then we're going to go before. After. Verse 1, chapter 10. You got it? In the third year of King Cyrus, of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar. The message was true, but the appointed time was long, and he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. He went into that, and that's 21 days. He went into that. He went into that. Looking to experience God, looking for a divine revelation. So God, not only do I need you to move in my life, God, I need you to show me some things. Are y'all hearing me so far? In the life of this church, God, I need you to show us some stuff. Show us what, what is possible. Show us how you can move. Show us what our individual level of involvement can be in making the collective vision come to pass. Old songwriter says, speak to me. Are y'all hearing me on the night? God, I need you to speak to me. So there are other examples of, of, of Old Testament fasting. I just wanted to give those, those few to you right there. Let's go to the New Testament. Let's do a few of those, and then, and then we'll do a couple other things, and then we'll be done for the evening. Acts chapter 13. This is the one I love. I, I, I love this passage. I love Acts chapter 13 because I think it's just a really cool chapter. Um, you know, when you get to talking about Bar Jesus, it's just, y'all read Acts 13 when, when you get a chance. It's one of my favorite chapters. <clears throat> Verse number one. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manan. Um, by the way, these are black people. Mm. Just so you just, you know, Niger, Cyrene, that's Africa. Just so you, just, just, 
you know, whenever someone say, you know, where, 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 the, where the black folk in, in the Bible? They, they right there. Yeah. Go back chapter uh, 8, you'll see an Ethiopian who was actually the first Gentile convert. Just, that's all I'm saying. It's there. Don't let nobody tell you this, this book is, you know, anything other than what it is. Hmm. Okay. Um, verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then again, says it repeats it. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. I fast and I pray when God is sending me to do something. That's heavy, y'all. What do you want me to do, Lord? Fast and pray. And then you are commissioned. We are not just to sit here at 150 East 2nd Street. We are commissioned by God to touch lives. Someone told me something on Sunday, and if you're watching, you know who I'm talking about. She blessed my soul. She mentioned a relative of hers who was trying to find a church home and narrowed it down to several churches and is leaning tabernacle. And it wasn't because of the worship experience. It was because they saw the activity in the community. That touched my soul. Amen. Amen. That blessed me in a major way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because it let me know that the work that is done, and, and not, not by me, you know what I mean? Not by me. You know, there, there's a certain, there's a level that I have, right? Um, in Ephesians, it says he called apostles, evangelists, prophets, teachers, right? Um, for the perfecting. Right, right. So you got to read it a certain way. King James says, perfecting the saints, work of the ministry, edifying the body of Christ. But if you read it in the original language, it is for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of the ministry, to edify the body of Christ. So in other words, it's my job to teach you and to preach to you and to minister to you that gives you what you need, that prepares you, that builds you up to do the ministry. I'm supposed to stir y'all up. I'm so that's 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 my job. When people say, well, "What is it? It's all on the pastor?" It's never been all on the pastor. It was never supposed to be all on the pastor. It's supposed to be the pastor to stir the people up to do the work of the ministry. Ma'am, I just wanted to share that I just moved away to Michigan like two months ago. And it just kept, I kept running into roadblocks and something, I felt like something was pulling me back to New Jersey for a period of time. So I, I'm here until the 31st of the month. And uh, when I saw what the message was gonna be about, I was like, oh, I gotta get there tonight. And I was gonna ask you after service, how do you hear from God? Like, what can you do to hear from God? And then when you started talking about the fast, and it's literally 21 days from the day that we start, literally takes me up to the period that I'm wow. leaving New Jersey and I feel like I'm commissioned. I'm at the end of this. I'm going to be commissioned to do something and I'm going to finally hear God speak. So you are leading us the way that you're supposed to in your word. And I really appreciate it. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That's beautiful. I saw you walk in. I was like, I thought, you know, <laughs> So, so good to see you, Swatu. So good. So good to see you. Yeah. We, we fast and we pray to be commissioned. We got, we got folk to reach. We got people's lives to touch. 
Your life needs to be touched. My life needs to be touched. Am I making sense? Let's keep moving. So, so, so there is, from the Old Testament perspective, there's the morning. There is, there is divination or, or, uh, or, or experience with God. There's divine revelation. In the New Testament, we're starting off with divine commissioning. God commissioning us. Okay? Um, but this is, this is where, where it really... It, um, it really is interesting to kind of to kind of continue to talk about this this piece of commissioning. I, I always look at Jesus because Jesus is Jesus is my dude, and Jesus should be your dude. Let's go to Mark chapter one. Mark M A R K. So we're going to connect. So, so this is a time where you kind of got to connect two passages of Scripture. Because, especially with Mark. Now, Mark's the oldest gospel, okay? And Mark's also the shortest. And Mark is also writing in, in what's called Koine Greek. Meaning, it, it's slang. Right? So when Mark Matthew and Luke, in particular Luke, they say, we gathered together, we went into the Ford Explorer, and we drove judiciously and cautiously to Wawa. Right? Mark says we got up in the car and rode out. <laughs> that's, the, that's the difference. But with that... <laughs> With that understanding, you have to read other passages with Mark sometimes because Mark doesn't always give the full details because his audience doesn't need that. All right, am I making sense? And you'll get it in a second. Verse 12, chapter 1. Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered to him. That's all it says about Jesus in the wilderness, in Matthew. I mean, in Mark. To really understand that, you got to go to Matthew, because Matthew actually elaborates on the situation. All right? So let, let's, let's, tempted by Satan, angels ministered to him, or angels fed him. Some scholars say that, this is what connects Mark 1 to, to Matthew 4, that in that moment of Jesus fasting, the angels gave him spiritual food. Matthew 4. Let's go there. So now that whole exchange is verses 1 through 11. Those two verses... <laughs> 12 and 13 in Mark chapter 1 is verses 1 through 11 in Matthew where he's like, okay, Mark just tripping. Mark, he going to tell y'all a little. Let me tell you what really. Let me, let me get the whole story. You know what I'm saying? So to give you the whole story, verse 1, then Jesus was led up, led, led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. So to let you know, when you're fasting and when you're praying, what oftentimes makes it difficult is because you're hungry and you're susceptible to the enemy. Right? When is the time you want food the most? Hell, Lord, help me up in here. Am I right? And it's like your, your senses are, are just, you know, more in tune when, when you're fasting. Right? You smell everything. You 
You're driving down 541. You don't just see Chick-fil-A, you smell it. <laughs> am, I, am I making sense tonight? It's when you abstain, that's where you're most susceptible to, to want it, to desire it. And that's why he's tempted in that moment, because that's the time. And that's the beauty of fasting, because that's the time where you have to lean on something that is deeper and stronger than just yourself, because otherwise you won't make it. Because the senses get a little stronger. Right, right? Like, like we're we talking about no sugar. Am I in the house yet? You, you know, uh, uh-huh. I'm talking about no sugar in the, did, did I, did I, I'm talking about no sugar up in here. That means when you're thirsty and, and that, that lemonade, that fruit punch is, right? Uh-huh. I've had, I'm just going to say this, I, I, I've talked to, you know, I've had, I had the opportunity to work with different people, many who are addicted persons, or addicted to various substances, and, and if you, it, it never fails, it never fails. Every person that I've met that had an addiction to crack says the same thing. They say, it calls your name. I said, that's what they say, it calls your name. I said, call Janelle. They said, you hear it. <laughs> call. <laughs> it calls you. The, now, I'm being funny, of course, but they, everyone has said the same thing. They said, it calls your name because you're susceptible in that moment. Am I making sense? So, of course, I'm making light of it. I'm being funny about it. But, but, but it is in that moment where we experience our human weakness and where we need to depend on the power of God. And that brings together a closeness, right? That brings together a closeness that is, that is, that is, uh, that is unbelievable. That is a beautiful thing. And if you, and if you can hold on to it, uh, it's, it's something that, that, that can really take you a long way. Yes, ma'am. Um, you was talking about crack, but food does that to you also. Like when you want to diet or try to fast, it calls your name. It mm -hmm. comes to your dreams. It walk with you. It talk with you. Yeah. You want that food. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Um, there was someone I know, know who's uh, addicted to alcohol. And, um, and he said, I'll never forget it. He said when he saw the beer commercials, he could smell it. See, like you can smell it. That's strong. You know what I mean, right? That's 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 so. Yes, ma'am. We also become very crafty in justifying, like that Beyond Burgers and sausages. That yeah, we yeah, we, yeah, we, we, you do know, all you that find stuff. all kinds of reasons to circumvent. Yeah, and yeah. justify we, we, why you should be able I, to do that. Absolutely. I, I've done it to me, and, and then until you realize that, well, that's, that's a shortcut. You, know, you don't know it at the time. You're just trying to do, and you know, when someone bring it to your attention, and then it's... And it's other ingredients, even though it's not meat. It's other ingredients that we shouldn't be having. I mean, you no, know, but, the, you know, help me, Lord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fasting is no joke. It requires, it requires us to dig. Requires us to, to, to go forward. How many of you know when you, when, you, when you put forth a great effort, you get a great reward? And when you lean not into your own understanding and lean not into your own power, that's what fasting is. Now, let me hurry up and get on out of here. Um, uh, Matthew chapter 6. We, and I, I just need to mention this. I needed to throw this part in because um, I've talked about it before, but we just, we don't, you know. I, we had to do some teaching on it. Tabernacle historically never fasted collectively until a few years ago. It just didn't happen. 
That's not, wasn't an emphasis here. And so there had to be some teaching. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So while you're fasting, don't be going down the street. Don't be coming to work. You're all right, just, just, I'm just, I'm struggling. What's wrong? I'm, I'm fasting. That's your reward. The feeling that you get from doing, that's your reward. It says, wash your face. In layman's term, take a bath, comb your hair, right? Put on a nice outfit, step together. So no one can tell the difference. Am I talking to somebody? But you read my mind because I was wondering if during the process that we're gonna have like a buddy system, like call people up, like I'm hungry, you gotta look at like, you know, something like that. <laughs> but now you saying like, you know. Don't front. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep a poker face the whole time. Call, so. your, call yeah, your homie. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's up, man? Hey, man, I'm hungry, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just, I, don't, I don't know if I can do About to text you right now. Like you're oh, I'm starving, <laughs> man. I'm starving. <laughs> no, no, you, you can have an accountability partner. You can, you, you can have someone. Who, the purpose, so is, is the, what is the text is saying is, is, don't go be around, you know, walking around, oh, huh. So the world can see you hungry, you know, but, but I, I, you can pray with people. You can have accountability partners. There's nothing wrong with that. You can even have someone, you know, that, hey, I'm struggling, right? That's okay. It's, it's the publicizing your struggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, when we, when we first started fasting, you know, first time people was on Facebook fasting with the church. <laughs> Y'all remember all that? They showing recipes. I got Daniel Fast recipes. I done lost five pounds, you know. (laughs) I'm like, you missed. I had to, like, address it from the pulpit. I was like, yo, yo, we're missing the point of this. (laughs) Please don't go on Facebook, you know. You know. We were excited. Yeah, you very were excited, but just, just uneducated about the subject. That's all it was. We've been doing maybe five years now or so. So, Am I making sense? So what's the point of all this? The point of all this uh, is, is consecration. Anybody know that word? Yeah. What does that mean? Set apart. Set apart. Right? Separating ourselves. It is not we are better than anyone else. It is we are separating ourselves, right? We are separating ourselves to say we are dedicating ourselves for a collective cause. We're separating ourselves for an individual cause. We're separating ourselves for an individual cause and a collective cause. Does that make sense? Yes, Yes, ma'am. Is there somewhere where we can see exactly what the Daniel fast, what we are not supposed to eat on the Daniel fast? Yes. Yes, absolutely. It's in our announcements. Yep. I mean, they have that. You can get one of those as well, and it, it'll list. So back to, to, to the point previously, when you look at, at Daniel chapter 1, when uh, uh, they had the boys together and they were feeding them the king's meal to try to build them up. Daniel and his friends said, no, just give us vegetables and water. And they found that after the the vegetables and water, they were stronger than the others. When you talk about 
a Daniel fast. Really, that's kind of what it is, vegetables and water. But um, <laughs> we're going to do this other Daniel fast. <laughs> yeah, we, we ain't going to do just no vegetables and water. But uh, help us, Lord. Yeah. Like cauliflower pizza. That's funny. I know it's good. I know it's good, but you know. Huh? No, cauliflower. It's not processed. No, no, no. We ain't talking about frozen pizzas. We're talking about you make the cauliflower and you, yeah, it ain't, it ain't processed. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, no, no bread. The cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah, it can't have sugar. It can't have, it can't be leavened. Yeah, it can't be, have yeast. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, as long as it's not yeast, you know, it's not supposed to be that. Honey? Nope. No sweeteners. Honey. No, I was no asking sweeteners. for. I looked it off. I look so I this so I because I, I made some mistakes earlier too. I'm gonna be honest. Uh -huh. You know I was like okay agave that's natural. Right. Nope. It's a sweetener. Right. Who? Hummus. Hummus. That's a good question. I think that's okay. That's chickpeas. Yes. Yeah. yeah can't can't have other stuff mixed in exactly. So like your smoothies. When you go, you know, to get your smoothie or make your smoothie, don't be putting all that other stuff in it. <laughs> and when you go to Smoothie King, tell them, you know, I don't want that sweet, the, the, them, 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 uh, them, them, uh, no, uh, what are they call they had, they had the, uh, the, the, the strawberries, the sweetened strawberries. No, 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 the raw ones. Matzo crackers. Yeah, those, those, I think those are okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause yeah. They're, no yeast. Yeah, you, you can you can find them. If you go to the store, you can find the stuff that has no yeast and, and you can get through it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Hello? Uh, Pastor, you... What oh, ain't working now? Uh, Pastor, you want to talk just uh, just a quick minute about for those that are fasting for the first time or for those that are not accustomed to fasting uh, to know that the first, I would say about the first three or four days are the worst. But after about the fourth day, sometimes even the fifth day, uh, the cravings are not as bad. Yeah. And you can begin to settle in and settle down and feel better. If you can get past the first four or five days, you're, you, you'll feel better. Yeah, that, that's, that's, better. yeah that's absolutely true. Yeah. You know, and, and it, for those who are doing this for the first time, that is, that is an absolute yeah. true statement. You know, so they don't give up so yeah, easily. Because your, your stomach be growling that first day. Yeah. You know, I mean, your stomach be... <laughs> you, know, you know, like what you doing? You know, <laughs> and then it then it chill out. You know, after a couple of days, it may get worse that second because then you know your stomach really like you done lost your <laughs> believe it, believe in mind. You know, and but then it'll you know you'll you'll get into a groove. We get to a groove. Let's go over here. Um, pistachios. Is that all right? It never specifies pistachios. Oh, nuts are fine. Yeah, nuts, are nuts are fine. Yeah, nuts. Peanuts, cashews, pistachios, walnuts, that's fine. But no honey. No honey. Yeah, don't put no don't put nothing on it. Yeah. No salt. salt is fine. Salt is fine. Natural. Pastor, when piggybacking off what Dr. Uh, Graves said regarding your first time, um, it'll be my second time doing it, but it's regarding diabetics. Because I'm a yes. diabetic. Yes. And remember when we did it together, Tanya? It was really hard. And my diabetes, I drop. I'm always dropping very, very low. Mm -hmm. So keeping a balance there 
is um, important also. Yep. It's dangerous on one side, but it's also important to keep that balance. And it was so last year I didn't do it because of that, because my my triglycerides, I guess that's the right word, were I was like in the forties and fifties and I couldn't regulate them during the time we were fasting. Yep. So I couldn't even do it. Yep. Um, better prepare this year. I also sent you an email. It's a PDF. I think that's something very important that you can share with the church, um, hopefully for Sunday. It's a guide an apostle shared with me for the Daniel fast. Yeah. I yeah. just printed it out at home, and it gives you scriptures. It gives you everything regarding the Daniel fast. It even gives you um, certain recipes to do during the Daniel fast as well. Yeah, yeah, there, there are resources out there. Mm -hmm. So I just sent you that in the email. But, but I want to, I want to, I want to piggyback off what you what you just said because um, thank you for bringing this up because I always neglect to bring this up, um, and it's very important. It's a serious subject, and that is this ain't designed to kill nobody. So if you have medical challenges, right? If you have medical stuff going on, handle that. Do what you. One of my my trainers that I used to work with always said. We're not asking you to do what you can't. We're asking you to do what you can. Right? Yeah, yeah, God knows, you know, do what you can do. Ma'am. What I would say that helped us when we did the Daniel Fast, um, we kept a journal. So a daily journal, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And see, I can go back and refer to that. So it's not like I'm starting over. Yeah. Like, what am I going to eat? So I kind of know what my meals were. Yeah. So it's easier for me to refer back to that. Just, you know, especially if you're starting for the first time. And then you'll have it for next year just to look at that daily journal. Absolutely. And it helps with your meal prep. Absolutely. Don't. So that's another good piece of advice. Don't wait until Wednesday to figure out how you're going to move forward. <laughs> Because Thursday going to come and you're going to be like, uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> no, prepare yourself now, right? Like in full transparency, I ain't going to tell you the person, but in full transparency, what I do, what I do, I have someone cook for me. I pay them. I, I pay them because I, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I need someone who with specific instructions that knows and so I prepare myself financially to be able to take care of the groceries and pay that person for those you know few weeks to take care of you know the needs we did say fruits were okay yeah fruits are okay yeah fruits are okay okay yes ma'am and then right here and then we'll end it out because uh, I got to get back to baby boy. I got to sit her at the house now. And it's bedtime. I know people, a lot of people know that, but just uh, a refresher that we're talking about fasting, at, and we didn't touch too much on praying, but fasting and without yeah. praying yeah. is fruitless. It, it goes together. So you got to put them yeah. together. It goes together. Yeah, this is a time where your devotional life should increase. Like, I'm... Uh, in, in full transparency, I'm looking for God to do something uh, in my devotional life. That's as pastor. I'm being transparent. I need God to do something in my devotional life. I need that. And I think that's very, very important that you prioritize that. There was one over there, I think, right there. Yes. Um, I have two questions. I know you said to anoint yourself before I was doing the past. I, I so can't my really. question is, how do you anoint yourself? That's one. And then also, um, if you have the oil, is it best for you to anoint it, or is it better that your pastor anoints your oil? So, okay, all right. When you talk about, a, a, you know, a, anointing and things of that nature, I'm not as well-versed because that's not – typically you know that's not an area that i i focus on mm -hmm. pastorally i'm being transparent with you on that um from a perspective of what oil oil's originating purpose is when you talk about it anoints it it you go you go all the way back to the scriptures um pour the the, the oil on the head down the beard even aaron's beard um, Samuel anointing David with the oil. It is, it, is, it is a purification piece, okay? 
usually someone does it for you. Meaning, you know, people say they anoint themselves. Um, even in the scripture, when it says they were fasting, it says, wash yourself, anoint yourself. Right? So, so usually someone else, but it can be you as well. So um, for me, if, if I'm giving you an answer, I would say, uh, uh, I would say go about that in a, in a personal, spiritual way. And I think you'll be just fine anointing yourself in, in preparation, in purification. That's the key word for what you're going to do. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweetie. All right, let's, um, let's go ahead and, and get ready to go. Like I said, I got a baby that I got to get to bed. <laughs> Amen. I get in bed. Wifey is, is caught up on something else tonight, and uh, sitter is at the house. All right, gave him a bath. I was washing him up, trying to get to Bible study at night. So washed him up. He's he's all ready to go. Little man is 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 turning two tomorrow. Yeah. My CJ is two tomorrow. So yeah, all them twos. I love the twos. Man, little buddy's a trip, man. Y'all pray for us. <laughs> My man wake up in the middle of the night, every night. Every night. Every night. Every night. I love him. <laughs> he wake up every night. Y'all be so sleepy. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Me and my wife, we be so sleepy. <laughs> Y'all pray our strength. Help us, Lord. All right. Those who are watching online, appreciate your presence. Again, we want to see you next week. Uh, Dr. Pointer will be here. I promise you he'll bless your life. I promise you he'll bless your life. I try not to bring anybody in here uh, that does not have a word from the Lord. Okay? All right. May God's presence and peace be with you uh, from henceforth now and forevermore. Take care. See you next time.